Hello guys, this is Panzermeister 36. Today's video is going to be a little bit of a book review in which we look at this fairly recent release, T-34 Shock by Francis Pullum and William Cares. Uh, I'm a modeler and I like to build models, so what I like to see in books and what I like to have in my collection is books that help me identify and understand um, modifications and the development of vehicles so that when I build a model kit of them, I know where to change stuff or what I need to take a look at. You know, if I need to buy some aftermarket tracks and accessories, what do I need to look at when I'm actually trying to build this specific vehicle? And that's what this book, to me, is most useful for. It's about 500 pages long, and it's got, I believe, more than 500 photographs in there, along with a lot of accompanying text. So I'll give you uh, some close-ups of just some of the pages flipping through here, but as you can see, you've got a lot of nice, big black and white photos, mainly of wrecked vehicles, because these are mainly photographed by the Germans who had cameras. Common German soldiers had personal cameras much more than the Russians did. So when they're seeing T-34s, mainly they're knocked out vehicles. But it's still T-34, usually still in pretty good condition. Often you'll be lucky and you'll have multiple photographs of the same vehicle from different angles. So you can better identify like the features of it. And then you can see that you've got some accompanying text with um, the captions that describe the vehicle itself, you know, the variant, the specific identifying features that they come up with in the book to name it, the area, and so on. And then you also have the text of the chapters in which these photos are held. Now, the chapters are mainly broken down by factory, and then they go down by like months of production. So, you know, you got Stalingrad factory, October 1941 to December 1941. And then after that point, there's a, every once in a while, there's a major change in the actual production so they're going to change the way that they're you know making the turret or they're making some changes major changes to the road wheels of the suspension and so on so then of course you have a new chapter where they talk about you know now what's happening in this major time period of the factory and then you've got a whole bunch of different factories making these things for example some of the cool stuff i learned is that uh, the 112 factory never actually made welded turret t-34s because they were always casting the turrets because they had a lot of good casting technology because of what the factory is making before the war and stuff like that you know you learn all this cool stuff and then you think oh maybe i want to build one of these 112 factory vehicles with all the extra armor bolted to the front or welded to the front as i said at the beginning um it's mainly a technical book but it's not a dry technical book you can see that there is a lot of text that describes the reasons why there's changes going on uh, design changes that they want to improve or simplify on and then there's also a few sections in the book about battles. Now, it's not a history of the battles of the, T of the T-34, but there are still some relevant battles that they discuss. So, for example, the, uh, the assault on Kalinin in late 1941, which is a very famous uh, battle on the uh, in the early stages of the uh, Operation Barbarossa, I guess, the war in the Soviet Union. Uh, this is basically a desperate counterattack by a unit of... Uh, Soviet veteran tankers from, I guess, Poland and or Japan, and um, and also the early stages of the war in Russia, of course. And they're basically given a bunch of tanks, no infantry support, and they're supposed to retake a town. Uh, it's a very well photographed battle, especially the aftermath of the battle. A number of the vehicles are very well photographed from multiple angles, and this also is a battle in which the iconic T-34-57 took place, which is a very rare limited production series of T-34s that were almost meant to be tank destroyers with their 57mm guns. And I'm actually currently building a model of one of those. Now I did actually build this model before the book came out, but I built it off of photographs that are photographs of the collection of Francis Pullum. And he's got those photos and more in this book. So if you're like kind of like that in a situation where you want to build a cool T-34 or something like that, you know, this book has a lot of good photographs and of course a lot of good technical information about what you need to do. So, for example, from the photographs that he posted on Facebook and that I t talked to him about, you know, I identify, okay, I need to change the tow hooks, I need to change the drive sprocket, I need to change the turret hatch, or use options that are given in the kit. I have to pick specific ones and so on. And for someone like me who's quite serious about, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm a kind of a self rivet counter. I want to build a, a vehicle, I want it to be pretty accurate. So, that's something where um, this book is definitely useful. They even talk about kind of like the pre-production of the T-34, the predecessor vehicles like the BT series, and the um, kind of like the prototypes, the A-20, A-32. And then also at the end, you go into the uh, T-3485, 
and then the 245 m or other variants that are produced after the war and used well actually it's still used to this day in some countries a lot of photos in there are black and white photos i'm pretty sure they're all black and white photos um, but they're very good photos and there are in the middle of the book there are some color plates that are uh, just kind of like you know the typical side views that are of some various camouflage patterns marking options of uh, some famous tanks i'll put up a clip of that here for you guys and then also at the end of the book there's a very very useful section with some nice three four five view drawings uh, major variants of the t-34 so you've got like an early turret from this factory you know you got a, a laminated turret from this factory and so on and it's not of course every variant they talk about in the book because that would be a, a lot of, of drawings but there's the major variants and I guess if you're kind of building, if you want to build a cool vehicle, you can get some inspiration from there or, of course, from all the other photos in the book. Yeah, so, I mean, I kind of already talked about everything I want to talk about. It's a very, very good book, a lot of good information, technical but not dry. I know that my favorite book on the Stoke 3 is this one here, which is basically the driest book ever. It's just like, what kind of lights are used on the Stoke 3? over the course of production. <laughs> it's a bunch of tables about this kind of stuff. And I guess that's excellent reference for someone like me, but it's it's kind of boring. You can't really read through it just when you're reading, a, when you're just sitting down and reading. It's just a bunch of information. This you can because it's a lot of accompanying text, a lot of good captions, and it's like, you know, there's actually some battles and some stories in there as well, uh, interspersed within the the greater technical uh, breakdown of the, T of the T-34 in this book. So. It's also not that expensive. You can buy it for about $40 on Amazon, maybe a little bit more depending on where you live. And uh, also if you live in like the UK or whatever, it might be cheaper just to get it straight from uh, Font Hill Media, who are the publishers themselves. But yes, this is an excellent book, has my seal of approval, and I've been enjoying reading it over the past month and learning. And uh, there's been a couple of photos in there that I saw and I'm like, who kind of want to build that T-34 now? So I'm gonna have to buy some more dragon kits. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, you could leave any questions or comments below. I always read through them all. And uh, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can do that below or with the link on the screen here. It's much appreciated if you can. If you can't, no problem. Uh, I just appreciate that you guys like watching and listening to my videos. So as always, I will see you guys next time. Uh, take care, goodbye, and happy modeling.